So, hi everybody, good morning, good afternoon, depending on which part of the big, big world you are in right now. Thank you for joining us today and um, big, big welcome from our part. So, we are here at Internations in the Munich office with beautiful sunny weather outside, but it's quite, quite chilly. Um, so, I'm really happy to be in the warm, warm room and warm office here. Um, I'm Anastasia Rechuk. Um, I'll be hosting your handout today. And um, I'm here working at Internations as the Learning Engagement Lead Internations Academy. So, we are here to help you, to support you, to get you to the uh, best possible performance as, a, uh, as our Internations Council. So, welcome, welcome. And today, of course, I'm not uh, alone. I have little helpers, and those are my um, colleagues from the groups team, Emily and Hi. Katie. <laughs> so, Katie, would you say something about what you're doing with Internations? <laughs> Yes, so I'm Katie and I am a regional groups manager here and my communities, I'm over Switzerland, Munich, and then pretty much everything east of that all the way to Russia. And if you're living in a city, then I might have chatted with you because that would be what it covers. So. And Emily? Hi, I'm Emily. Thanks everyone for joining us. Um, I'm taking care of our communities in Western Europe and also in our Scandinavian communities as well. And it's just going to be a great time speaking with everyone today and I hope we can answer all your questions. Uh, thank you very much, girls. So we are here in Munich, but we also have a very special guest speaker uh, joining us today all the way from Zurich. Well, not so far, but still a different country for us. So um, we are welcoming Gerd. Um, would you say a couple of words about yourself, Gerd? Yes. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Gerd, and I'm uh, I'm living in Zurich, and I'm hosting here the monthly uh, burger events. So we have the Burger Madness group. Uh, once a month, we go and have some gourmet burger somewhere. So it's not a McDonald's or Burger King group. Okay, it's uh -huh. some more <laughs> some decent uh -huh. burger. Um, and before that, I used to host uh, the Spanish tapas group in Madrid. And uh, yeah, then I decided it was too warm, and then I moved to Switzerland last year. Um, thank you very much, Gerd. Uh, so, um, um, I'm really glad that um, you all have joined us today, and um, we are trying to um, give in, in this handout to share some tips and tricks to give you some advice on um, how to host um, the, the, the best possible activities. Uh, so I'm going to um, start asking our viewers to submit some questions from the, oh, sorry. <laughs> that was a little glitch right there. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'll be asking our viewers to submit their questions uh, so we can um, address all, all um, possible things that are out there. Uh, but before that, I will um, already heard, uh, Gerd, when you joined us a bit earlier today, that you have a very um, good um, tips, very good um, tricks how to cope with the no-show rate and that you're actually having more attendees that are signed up for activities. Could you share some um, of this experience with our councils today? Yeah. yeah. Um, before I answer, uh, you have to know that I work in marketing and sales, so maybe <laughs> I'm going to use a bit too much of this marketing and sales consultancy uh, language. Um, but uh, w whenever I host an event, I I, I, um, I look at uh, the event from the customer point of view, and the customer in this case would be would be the participant. And uh, I think it's all about the, the the complete customer experience or participant experience. It's not just about the day that you host it. It's from the beginning till the end, meaning that. What I do is really take care that the experience for the participant is, is excellent from the moment that they look, that they find the, uh, the description of the event online, when they sign up, when they write something on the wall, when they arrive, 
even after the event. Uh, so the different steps that I take normally before hosting something, I always go myself to a place. I never make a reservation in a place where I haven't been myself before. I want to try the burger. I want to see the place, the physical environment. I want to see the service. I want to talk to the waiter and, if possible, to the owner if, 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 uh, if he's present. To have a little chat, uh, you know, to really get an impression about the place. Uh, some places I went to and I didn't organize an event because I think they were not up to the standards. Most of them are. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I organize it. And then what I think is important uh, when when you launch, well, when you make the description, keep it a bit funny, keep it a bit crispy. You know, uh, what I do, I always try to put use movie names for my events. <laughs> uh, for example, for the last year's Christmas event, we used uh, the hamburger steals Christmas. You know, with <laughs> turn to the grunge. Um, <laughs> yesterday we had an event. Uh, it was in a place with slow food, so we took uh, too slow to burgerias, uh, right. referring to uh, too fast to furious. Uh, and also in the description, I try to keep it a bit fun. But uh, but an important part that I put always in the description, and especially for the people that are new or a bit shy, you know, to to bring them on board, I put uh, some uh, special lines for them, you know, uh, just letting them know that. Uh, they can call me, WhatsApp me, or we can meet before the event. You know, if if they're new and they feel a bit reluctant to, be, I can meet with them before, like half an hour, fifteen minutes, so that they feel more comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, an important thing is also, I think, um, depending on the wall. Uh, when I have an event, I log into Internation several times a day to see if somebody wrote something on the wall and respond to that, uh, because this keeps things alive. People see that it's not an event that was published and then is dead until the actual day of the event. It really needs to be alive. So it's important to respond quickly to, to the wall so that people see that things are happening there. You know, It's a fun environment and it's alive. Um, what I do before the event as well, I check all the profiles uh, so that I have something to talk about the day that people arrive. At least the nationality, maybe where they work. So you have something um, also to connect people. If you see that some people are from the same country or they work in the same sectors. I mean, it's not an in-depth FBI investigation, but just a quick look at a couple of things um, so that you have some things to talk about. Um, another thing I do is uh, Two-thirds of the participants I have in my group are repeaters, and one-third are new, always. So whenever I see uh, new people, I write them a personal email, two or three lines, just to welcome them. Um, and this has two effects. One, they feel more welcome, it's more personal, it's not like they just signed up for an event and then wait for two weeks until the event actually happens, but they actually got a personal message, so it's it's, they feel more involved in it. And secondly, for me, it's an indication whether they will actually show up or not. Mm -hmm. Because if they reply, I have a much bigger chance of them showing up. If they don't, it doesn't mean they don't show up. Some people never reply to the welcome, but they show up anyway. Um, but it's a way to, uh, to get more uh, your participant rate uh, up. And also to make them feel more comfortable. Then... Um, one of the things I do, I wear an orange sweater for my burger events <laughs> <laughs> because it makes it easy for people to recognize me. Uh, in the past, what I have done sometimes, I let them on the wall, I organized a little uh, yeah, vote and they could choose how they should recognize me by wearing an orange sweater or a sailor hat. And I had equal <laughs> votes, so I had to wear an orange sweater and a sailor hat both. So I was looking like a local fool uh, standing in the restaurant with a sailor hat. Uh, but but these things they they make it more fun also and, and assures more also that people will show up because they see that it's it's a it's a fun group and you know and and makes them more uh, motivated to show up as well and then the day of the event um, I show up uh, 20 15 minutes before that I have my list of participants. Um, I check the profiles before I know, so I study the names, and that's important that you know all the names of everybody. 
Uh, well, one time I called somebody Celine instead of Cecile, but I think she forgave me by now. Um, um, and I have um, one eye on the door and one eye on the people that are already in. Um, so I'm always on the look for people that, en that are entering and that are looking around as if they are looking for somebody, because possibly that's somebody from Internations. I think it's important that you see the participant first, and not the participant, uh, that, that the participant doesn't see you before you see him or her. Uh, because I think it makes them feel much more welcome. And, and then I go there, introduce myself, and I make sure that I know their name, and I introduce them to all the rest, so that immediately they feel welcome, they feel integrated. I have attended some small groups myself, and I was really surprised and amazed that when I entered, the console was sitting down and didn't even bother to get up, mm. and shake hands, didn't introduce me to anybody. It was like, I don't really care whether you're here or not. Uh, just find yourself a seat and introduce yourself. I don't really care. Because those things make you not repeat these things. Um, then I think that's, that's the important part, uh, because you have to take into account that there are people that are new, they don't know anybody, they're new to internations or they're new to the city or, mm. or they just don't know anybody in the group and they come a bit shy and, and it's important really to, you are the responsible there of bringing them on board. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is one of the most important moments. And then also, um, yeah, once I see that they're chatting amongst each other, okay, then I have one eye on the group, mm -hmm. chatting with them, but the other one constantly on the door. Yeah. Um, then during the event also, I, I go around. When we're having the burger, I get up and I go around to check if everybody's okay, if, if they're satisfied. Uh, um, <laughs> if you see that some parts of the table are maybe not connecting enough, I, I change my seat to open the conversation there. Mm -hmm. um, Take pictures. Um, when I take pictures, I always ask if everybody agrees uh, on having their pictures published. I think that's a, it's a small detail, but I think an important one because nobody wants to see their pictures published without permission, probably. So I always ask if there's anybody in the group that doesn't want their picture published, and I make sure that they don't appear on the pictures. Um, mm -hmm. After the event, I publish them. Um, yeah, and basically that's a bit of customer experience. Um. Thank you very much. I didn't <laughs> want to interrupt you. <laughs> that was really great. I'm trying to I try to note down all the all the little things that you that doesn't require too much effort but really keeps um, the your burger group burger yeah. madness it's called right yeah uh, really cohesive and uh, you make feel everybody welcome in the group so they they enjoy every time the activity and they're eager to come back every month and um, and join this activity over and over again so um, what you what you do and what is important also to mention that you're checking out the place before the activity. So you're yeah. going there, you're talking to the owner, you're trying to see whether the atmosphere is okay, whether the food is fine, um, uh, finding out all the special things that make our, uh, our activities um, so popular. You try to put the crispy description, so I really like the idea with the um, the different movie names or uh, different um, topics that you dedicate the activity to certain holidays like Christmas, Burger Stall Christmas, so uh, that's also uh, quite interesting so it makes the, the um, uh, activity more catchy and probably more people will be like, oh that's interesting, I, I would like to join, that sounds cool. So I really like that idea, so I would like our consoles to, to take this one on their list. Um, you also mentioned that you like to get to know your attendees or the members who attend in your activity before um, you meet them, so you go into their profiles, you're trying to memorize the names, matching the names with the faces, and um, sending personal messages, which is also important to keep, uh, keep um, everybody cohesive and make sure that um, uh, they come, because of course it's, it's, a, 
um, it's a better way to, to make feel everybody welcome when you personally address them. That's also very important. Uh, you wear an orange sweater. I don't uh, say that everybody, all the consoles, should wear orange sweaters when they're hosting activities. Uh, but of course, it helps people to recognize you, so they don't have to ask around and go to different tables. Oh, are you into nations? Are you into nations? That's really uh, something that uh, makes you uh, pop out of the crowd and everybody knows, okay, orange is ours. <laughs> um, or the Tomorrow same. I will publish the pictures probably. When you check them out, you will see them. You will see me appearing with the orange sweater. <laughs> And uh, and also the orange is a very lively color, so um, very yeah. cheerful. So you make people att uh, feel attracted to you as well. Um, also, um, you're trying to take pictures of the activities. So um, if somebody did not manage to attend, they will be like jealous because you're having so much fun during the activity. You're posting them afterwards, but of course checking also. Um, whether everybody's agreed to, to be published on, on the website. Yeah. So I think those are really, really great tips. I, I have nothing to add. I mean, I have not um, hosted any activity myself, but that sounds like a, like a great start, and I would be myself motivated to create a group <laughs> uh, from now on. Uh, we do have questions coming in already, so I also encourage everybody who's watching us to start using that questions app on the right hand side of your screen and submit anything that you um, uh, want uh, to answer to uh, to ask um, Gerd. So we will try to um, give you answers, but also our group's team uh, members who are um, always there to support you. Uh, we do have a question from Madrid, okay. from Julian. Uh, he's a council of live music and gigs group in Madrid, and for some events, they need to create the activity uh, quite in advance. So by creating the activity in advance, people can buy tickets before they are sold out. Uh, what would you suggest um, how to keep this um, group alive between the uh, activity is created and the actual day of activity. So I think he's struggling uh, with the time frame since they have to um, post the activity quite long time in advance. Well, uh, one thing I would suggest to, uh, that you can do it through the wall to keep the wall alive um, with any updates. Um, that's what I do. Um, like, for example, uh, that I gave before when I launch a little contest so that they can vote on how to recognize me on the day of the activity, you know, do you want me to wear the sweater or the sailor hat? Uh, because this keeps it a bit alive. Um, or it could be done via via uh, mailing the, um, the participants, but of course you need a reason to mail them. My, my suggestion would be through the wall. Uh, with launching these kind of uh, funny things like uh, where they can vote on certain things or, you know. Yeah, I can um, tag, tag on along that on top of using the wall, which is a, just a great way to have a lot of people look at one message so they can all contribute. And as Geert said, keeping it light or funny or maybe you can just post a link to a video that the band's doing or if there is something. But on top of that, you could also take advantage of the group messaging feature. So if there was a relevant update that you needed to send all the attendees, say, hey, just a reminder, this is coming in two weeks. And then you can put some discussion topics down below or say, hey, had a crazy thought. Does anyone want to meet for a drink beforehand? If you do, we can go to this point. It'd be great to, to get ahead. And then um, if you want to arrive early or something like that, that way it's keeping everyone in a conversation together and then also keeping it fresh because it can be a problem. You're right, you, people click the attend button and it's so far in advance maybe they forget. So just those little constant reminders or questions that says like, hi, we're still here, can go a long way. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Um, so yeah, so Emily and Katie, they have experience with um, various councils in different local communities, so they can also um, give you some tips and, and advice on how to make your activity a success. Um, 
So we, um, I hope you were helpful answering this question to um, Julian. We also have quite um, a few questions, and in general, in this handouts um, that we are hosting on monthly basis, uh, we also um, have questions regarding how to uh, manage the workload. So, Gerd, do you have any co-counsel helping you, or any volunteers that are also involved in uh, uh, creating activities together with you, or are you just managing it all by yourself? Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm traveling quite a lot, or this year I've been traveling quite a lot, so I had two co-consuls uh, helping out. Uh, now they're not there anymore, so I should look for another one. Um, but basically, I mean, your, your physical attendance is only required for checking out the place and for the day of the activity. The rest, the wall and all that, you can do that from home, from work. Uh, don't tell my boss I said that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> or when, when, when traveling from the hotel, uh, whatever. So, uh, that, I do it once a month, you know. Some people are asking me now in the burger group to do, to repeat the same event every month, to do first the event and then do the event reloaded because of the high demand. Because normally, uh, after publishing the event, it takes about two, three hours until the list is full. So people are now asking to do it twice. I wouldn't have time for that. For that, yeah, I would recommend to get a co counsel but be careful when getting a co counsel on who you choose, because I think they need certain qualities. It's not necessarily um, the one that is attending uh, every month. Or it really needs somebody that is engaged. You know, that 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 can that is good with people to receive them, to get the conversations going, to introduce people to each other. So they really need. Uh, people skills. So be careful when selecting somebody. It's uh, your best friend is not necessarily uh, the best choice for a for a co-counsel. You know, really look at the people skills that they have uh, yeah. to do that. Thank you very much. That's a very professional approach, but it's definitely um, um, a good a good example of uh, uh, managing um, the group and creating activities regularly because since Gerd is traveling, he also of course needs some help in supporting him in creating this activity. So I hope you will find somebody who's with that professional approach and um, social skills and uh, very communicative to help you out on the, on the days of the activity to welcome people and so on. And don't be afraid to wear an orange sweater, <laughs> I guess. Or a sailor hat. <laughs> or a sailor hat. Or whatever they suggest. I mean, you can challenge them, huh? but they can come up with crazy ideas. Uh, <laughs> but it's fun. Yes. Members, members can be creative. Uh, if you're willing to show up in a clown suit, hey, you, can, uh, <laughs> you can challenge them for that. Yeah, um, talking about members, uh, when you're choosing your venues, so when you're choosing the restaurants or cafes or bars where they serve really good burgers, uh, do you reach out also to the members of the group for ideas where to go? Or yep. you kind of just Googling it yourself? <laughs> it's a combination. I have a list of, uh, of places where I want to go. But then every time, in every activity, people are suggesting or people are even writing to me through the internations, messaging or WhatsApp or whatever, because they, they were in a place and they said, hey, I was in this place, you will really check it out, they have great burgers. So and I actually go and check them out. Uh, it also makes your members feel that their feedback is being uh, valued and, and really something done. So yesterday, the place where we went yesterday was actually one of the suggestions of a member. Mm -hmm. And this also makes members more uh, involved in the whole activity, you know. They know that they suggested something and we actually did something with it. Okay. Uh, and okay. this is also good for uh, your, and now I'm going to talk a bit uh, consulting and talk, but for your customer loyalty. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Um, I think it's also um, a good way to um, get um, your, um, the, the uh, the input of your members on board, uh, and it helps you to div diversify the um, the types of activities you have, and so in different restaurants, different places, different venues, and it's also something very uh, every time something new, so you're attracting more and more people to your activities. 
Um, what would, uh, since we are approaching till the end of the session today, what would you be your one tip, one advice to those councils who are watching us right now? So I remind you that those are people who have already hosted several activities, but they're still quite new to internations. Um, I think that uh, as a council you should be aware that you have a responsibility. This is not something that you do as a... Uh, you shouldn't take it too light, your responsibility as a council, and for me, the participant is your customer, and the customer should all be, always be in the middle uh, of everything. Everything you do should be focused on that customer, and mm -hmm. just try to put yourself in the shoes of a participant. Uh, how would you want the experience to be if you would be a participant in an activity? How would you want to be received? How would you want to be welcomed? Uh, how would you want the activity to, to, to be executed, you know? Think mm -hmm. about it like that. Uh, at the end, it's, it's just, just the same as you go to, to a restaurant or to a supermarket or a, a bank, whatever. I mean, it's how do you want to be treated? Just, if you can answer that question for your activity, then just put it into practice and then you will, uh, you will have a good activity. Thank you very much. So um, we are putting our members into the center of attention and we are trying to put ourselves in their shoes and see how would we like the activity to run, what we would like to experience, how we would like to be uh, welcomed or engaged in the activity and so on. So this is very important. Try to, to have fun but also don't forget that you have a group of people you're responsible for. Um, what about our intonations team? Um, Emily and Katie, do you have any tips, any advice from your experience working with various councils in different countries? Uh, what would you can give as one tip uh, to our councils who are uh, watching us today? Um, I think that gap here is a really um, important um, issue that you know you should keep the members engaged and you have to make sure there's a really positive experience for them and just make sure that everyone has fun. But I think at the end of the day, it should be also something you enjoy doing. I've seen that our most motivated consoles are the ones who are running groups so that's something that they're interested in and it's something that they want to be doing every month with other people. So they want to share that experience and doing this with other people and I think that really helps to like motivate the members that the council's motivated, the council's having fun, and it's going to engage more people. Yeah, and just to kind of tag along to what Emily said, it is really important to make sure that you yourself enjoy what you're doing, is I hope you're having a little trouble getting started. To, I, I would recommend to reach out to a couple of personal contacts that you have or friends, and have them go with you to the event. So when you're there at the activity, you already have a few friends around you, support group, and that way for all the people that are coming, you already have a nice little welcome committee. <laughs> so trying to create a little support group is also helpful. Um, thank you very much, girls. So um, as we're approaching the end of the today's handout, I would like to remind everybody who's watching us that um, our group's managers, so not only Emily and Katie, but um, also everybody else who is in contact with you, who is your group's manager, um, they're here to support you. So please um, write them, ask them if you are um, hesitant about where or when or how to create your next activity. Um, Please contact them if you have any questions um, or any ideas that you want to discuss and you're not sure about. They're there to support you. Um, as Garrett has already also mentioned, try to find a co-counsel if you feel that um, maybe this month your workload at work is too much and you need some time off. So um, co-councils are a good um, idea to, to kind of substitute you while you're gone. <coughs> but then... <coughs> you'll have an easier way to come back. So it's, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> it's always good to have those on board. We do have support resources. So this handout is one, one of them, but also your um, Groups Council manual is there to give you all the 
um, knowledge and all the resources that you need to start into, into your consulship role. So please, um, if you do have some um, questions regarding our platform, regarding posting activities or things like that, please go, go back and check your consul manual. There are quite a few um, uh, information pieces there, so um, uh, go back and check that one. And um, of course, um, create access to your local community. So if you um, attend some local events organized by our ambassadors, uh, you can uh, make more contacts, you can um, attract people to your, um, to your activity, to your group, and that way you can kind of expand um, the membership base of your group. So I think that's, um, that's it for today and I'm really happy that all of you have joined us and special thanks to Gert. Uh, so thank you very much for sharing this uh, very valuable experience and um, advice with us. Uh, so I'll, I'll catch up with you guys in the next handout. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye everyone. <laughs>